Now, Melbourne's International Comedy Festival is coming of age. This year marks its 30th year, showcasing some of the world's best comedians. Karen Percy looks at how the festival has changed over time. It was the unknown festival that attracted world stars. Melman smiles underneath, so. Does she? And uh, I've never thought of it, sex before, sex of Melman. <laughs> I suppose it is a woman. Everybody remembers Barry Humphreys, of course, uh, and I think Max Gillies was important, Jerry Connolly, uh, who were doing the rounds of the local events and things, and uh, we were rich in that talent, and uh, they, uh, they benefited from the opportunity, I think, every year to be part of this festival as well. John Kane, to his great credit, gave us a very small amount of money, which was a sufficient seed fund to uh, get the first festival on, and uh, with, mainly with smoke and mirrors we created the impression of a very large festival when it was I think 56 performances in the first year but of course it's then taken off we caught the right tram. In 1987 with $150,000 from the Victorian government the city's vibrant but fledgling comedy scene took flight. The strength of the comedy festival always was that it incorporated the whole town from top to bottom yep. that's how we got it going I think. Yes. So you had good stand-up people you had a climate that welcomed comedy in the bars and, uh, and the various halls that were around the place. Even then, it wasn't afraid to push the boundaries. It was a scandal that the show was even, the name was even used, Wog's Out of Work. When Nick and, and, and uh, Simon came in with their show to me, they had a, a one page of prospect that didn't look very good at all. But I loved the title, Wog's Out of Work. I said, we're putting it on anyway. It's such a great title. It caused a furor. The number of acts has increased tenfold since the early days, which means audiences are spoilt for choice. That's been a great strength over the years, I think. It isn't just the, the well-rehearsed and tried. It's a wide range of, uh, of uh, events and people. Uh, and we do have so many good, talented people the stand-up around this place at sportsman's nights and those things is quite remarkable. We've got artists on here at the Athenaeum for the Comedy Festival that are totally sold out that I've never heard of, who are people that have made their careers entirely on YouTube. Now, this was something even five years ago that was unheard of. So, the next 30 years, I, all I know is that comedy will never die. It will always be there. And I think the Melbourne Comedy Festival will always be one of its main focuses for new developments as new artists come through. And so say all of us. I mean, it really is one of the, the great world stages for comedy. The now, most so. enduring comedy festivals <laughs> in the world, <laughs> exactly. really. Good on them.